Hello, all you wonderful people out there in the dark. Thank you again for checking in. I really appreciate it. Today, we are going to talk about a cat named Ebenezer Howard. Yes, you heard me correct. His name is Ebenezer. Now, I looked it up. Uh, Charles Dickens wrote A Christmas Carol, or at least it was published in 1843. And this cat, Ebenezer Howard, he was actually born in 1850. I don't know if the Dickens classic was immediately a hit and became a classic, or if over time uh, it became a, a well-known book. So I'm gonna assume in the mid-1800s, Ebenezer was a fairly common name, uh, and it only uh, became infamous once A Christmas Carol became what well, A Christmas Carol is. I have to be honest, I kind of dig that name, Ebenezer. But anyway, Ebenezer Howard. He's an urban planner. Uh, as I just said, he was born in 1850. He passed away in 1928. And I want to talk a little bit about his connection to uh, Walt Disney and what I believe to be uh, the Walt Disney uh, amusement park, theme park properties, as well as uh, Celebration Florida, and maybe even uh, Golden Oak, which you probably haven't heard of. But anyway, so Ebenezer, uh, he wrote uh, a book called Tomorrow, Peaceful Paths to Social Reform. And the word tomorrow, it was the letter T-O hyphen morrow, um, sometime in the 1880s. Well, in 1898, it eventually is published as the Garden Cities of to hyphen morrow, so Garden Cities of Tomorrow. And what the book is really about is uh, this idea of creating this sort of utopian uh, community or society, a sort of a self-sufficient city. And keep in mind, this was written, um, you know, basically during the Industrial Revolution. So cities are smog-ridden, impoverished, um, you know, not places you want to be, a lot like today. But Ebenezer has this grand idea about creating a, a, a city that's, again, self-sufficient and it's not stacked with people. There, there's a, a central hub hmm, and people live within that hub and then there's agriculture, uh, uh, a ring of agriculture, a ring of people and uh, you know, almost a train that, that circles the perimeter. Kind of sounds familiar. Um, and I actually read his book, The Garden Cities of Tomorrow. I read it. Here's my Kindle. Um, take a look. Here's a, here's a picture of the cover. And I know what you're thinking. Ryan, you read that book? Yes, it's only 100 pages or so. And it was actually fascinating. Um, I highly recommend it. No, it is not a book you give to insomniacs who don't respond to medication. Uh, it won't take you that long to read, and I think it was only 99 cents on the old Kindle here. Um, and I also uh, took some time. His book led me to uh, Michelle Rowland's Manifestations of Ebenezer Howard in Disneyland. This is her dissertation. I believe this would be her master's thesis. Uh, take a look at this picture. This is a cover of her, her uh, dissertation. This too, absolutely fascinating. Michelle Rowland from the University of Florida. Um, I read through this and um, I gotta be honest, I, I read it, I don't know, it just took me a, a couple hours to read. And uh, I, was, I was very impressed how she made a connection to Mr. Howard, Mr. Disney, and actually the architect Frank Lloyd Wright and Henry Ford and how they all sort of interconnect at, at this time of this industrial revolution and this idea of uh, cities of tomorrow and these sort of utopian communities. Um, now for me, the number one problem with utopian societies is they work great on paper, but they miss a number one problem. You know what that problem is? I'm sure you do. Well, you're right, people. People are always the problem. And not, not good people or bad people, but everybody has different sensibilities. And if you have sensibilities that differ greatly, it's very hard to have that utopian society. 
But I thought today we would explore, I would share some of what Ms. Rowan wrote and some of what Mr. Howard wrote and how I believe Walt Disney may have actually read this book, uh, Garden Cities of Tomorrow, and how it influenced, in my opinion, uh, Disneyland and Walt Disney World more, and we'll get to it later, Celebration Florida and some other things. Uh, I think you'll find it interesting, so come on this journey with me. Okay, so we're talking about Ebenezer Howard and his, his book, the, the, you know, Garden Cities of Tomorrow. And he has this circular design, which was, I don't think, is original to him. I think that's a design that's existed for a long time. But there were actually two cities in England that were built uh, sort of based on his concepts. One was uh, Letchworth, and the other was, I think it's called um, a Wellwind Garden City. To be honest, I don't know a whole lot about these cities or their successes, and shame on me. I need to crack a book, which is a line I use a lot. Occasionally, folks have asked me, or people, it's like, well, how do you know this? And I, I used to, or still do, I joke and say, well, they hide that information in books. Crack one. So I highly recommend that you crack a book or crack a Kindle or go to Google when something interests you and look it up. The connections will lead you uh, to amazing places, just as it did for me. Uh, I would have never heard of Ebenezer Howard had I not had some curiosity. Now, I don't believe that Ebenezer Howard or Walt Disney or anybody else actually subscribes to uh, this utopia, this perfect society. Because as I, as I noted earlier, the number one problem is people. It seems to be always the number one problem. But not good or bad people, just people's sensibilities. No one wants to live in a place that becomes this sort of Stepford society where everybody likes chocolate, right? I like chocolate, I like vanilla, I like strawberry, and there are all those cats that like Neapolitan. But everybody has different preferences. I like rye whiskey, you like sour mask whis whiskey. I like red wine, you like white wine. I don't drink, I like beer. That's what makes things interesting, these differences. And if everybody in this town all like the same thing, well, what's the fun of that? But I do believe that Howard, well, maybe not Howard, but Walt Disney and others believe that that was a place that you could visit. And that's why Disneyland and Walt Disney World and, and Disneyland Paris and Tokyo and Shanghai and Hong Kong all exist. Take a look at this picture. You know what, first, take a look at this picture. This is a picture of Ebenezer Howard. I own that much. About what you expected. Now here's a picture from his book that talks about, you know, his circular city of mag the three magnets kind of pulling a city together. Take a look at this. Okay. Now, look at this aerial view of Disneyland Walt Disney World. That's the central hub. Do you see the similarities? I believe that Walt Disney and, and probably others believe that Utopia doesn't exist in reality, but you can visit it. In Disneyland and Walt Disney World and, and Disneyland Paris, uh, uh, Tokyo Disneyland, Shanghai and Hong Kong are all of these destinations that are utopian. Granted, the people that live there are characters, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Goofy, they, they're not real in that sense. But you go there and the, the troubles of the world are blocked out. And it is a utopia. It's expensive, but a utopia nonetheless. Um, And I think that's the magic. Now, in 1994, Michael Eisner, I don't forget when he was CEO, but he's CEO of the Walt Disney Company. He decides to break ground in a town called Celebration. And a lot of people accuse the town of Celebration being Disney's idea or, or fulfillment of that idea of the experimental prototype community of tomorrow. And I don't think that's the case because what I'm gonna show you here in a second, there's no real central hub. As near as I can tell, it is a it is a lovely city, but it is just our town. It, it, it that, that's all it is. And I'll mention it again, but there's a there's a 
documentary called The Bubble on Amazon that if you're interested in it, it's worth the $2 to watch. It is fascinating. It looks like a lovely city, but it's got rules. It's got a binder about this thick of uh, things you need to sign and agree to to live in this, this idyllic city. Hell, there's not even a gas station in this town. You have to leave the bubble to go get gas. So I don't think, I, I think that was what Eisner was trying to do. I don't honestly believe that that's what Walt Disney envisioned. I think he did envision ultimately a town where there weren't as many cars. You used monorails, you used the train, you, you went to work and you lived it, you, you lived and worked in a community and you didn't have to have those modes of transportation, but I digress. Um, take, well, take a look here. This is, uh, this is some of the paraphernalia I've gotten from uh, uh, the City of Celebration. I think you'll get a kick out of it. Okay, so as we were just discussing, uh, here is the uh, site plan or site map for Celebration Florida, circa 1994. Um, and as you can see here, there's no real central hub, um, nothing like what we have at Disneyland or Walt Disney World, or what Ebenezer Howard had described in his uh, in his books or his his vision of uh, whatever utopia. You can see here the general facts and figures. Um, I think it's like 4,700 acres is the the green belt for Celebration Florida. I'll post a, a couple of pictures right after this video. Um, kind of give you an idea what these are. Here's, here's basically some paraphernalia, some propaganda on the town. Again, if, if you're interested in buying, um, somewhat rare, I think. Uh, what else do we have? Here is a brochure for the week of February 3rd. This is actually new, but the hotel in the town known as the Bohemian Hotel in Celebration, which I think is owned by Marriott, but uh, kind of what they've got going on for that week. I have this uh, Celebration Chronicle, the local newspaper, as you can see, 1997. Uh, so just a few years after they broke ground, the local paper. And there, of course, is uh, a number of books, but I found this one to be very interesting on the story of this town. There is also an excellent, excellent uh, documentary called The Bubble on Amazon. I think it's $1.99. I think it is well worth, uh, it's about an hour long. I think it's well worth checking out. The thing I found most interesting was, you know, essentially it's just, a, it's a very lovely uh, town to live in. I, I think they capture the essence of all the things that we dream of, um, but there's also a stack of paper, probably five to six inches thick of things you agree to, basically a massive HOA to ensure uh, everything looks nice. I, I, I think ultimately, Again, this isn't what Ebenezer Howard or Walt Disney envisioned. This is more, uh, I think, Michael Eisner, who was the CEO of the Walt Disney Company at the time, what he perhaps thought, or the best he could do, of what Walt Disney's concept for the experimental prototype community of tomorrow would be. Um, I, don't think, I don't think this hit it, although I plan to visit this town. It seems lovely and idyllic. Uh, but I do not think this is uh, what Mr. Disney had intended. Uh, I don't think he also intended uh, Golden Oak, which we will talk about another day. I highly recommend you take a look at that. But um, anyway, just wanted to share that map with you. Okay, so you can see I spent some ridiculous money on some old maps and some various things, but um, I really, really think you should take a moment, and download um, Michelle Rowland's uh, master's thesis dissertation on the connection between Ebenezer Howard and Walt Disney or Disneyland. I, I found it very interesting, it's worth your time. And certainly for 99 cents, you can download on your Kindle uh, Mr. Howard's book, Garden Cities of Tomorrow. I think it's worthwhile. I found it terribly interesting. And I hope this piqued your interest, it, it, at least to, to try something new. Just, just take a look and read it. Um, and then in, in down the road here, there's another little town called uh, Golden Oak on the Walt Disney World property. 
this is interesting, it's new to me, I need to do some more reading, I gotta crack some books. Uh, it's, a, it's a little town or a little residency for people who are extremely rich. I think the cheapest house is like two and a half million dollars, which is a tremendous sum of money. But I'm fascinated, I have to do some more investigations on the process, which rest assured I will. Anyway, I've jabbered on long enough. Please take a moment, read Miss Rowland's uh, dissertation. I'll, I'll put in the description where you can go download it. Um, go to uh, not Amazon, well, Amazon or Kindle, get Mr. Howard's book. It'll only take you, depending on how fast you read, it's, it's like 111 pages. So you ought to be reading a couple hours. It's worth a while. Um, I think you'll enjoy it. And um, again, it's fascinating the connections. I just linked. Ebenezer Howard, Michelle Rowland, Walt Disney, Henry Ford, and Frank Lloyd Wright in a, in a YouTube vlog, at least loosely. Um, I don't know. Anyway, in this world, when you can be anything you want, be kind, be humble, be forgiving, melting snow. I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, comment, go read about Ebenezer Howard, go read about Michelle Rowland, do your own investigations. Enjoy the day.